Today's quick cast is a question and answer with Jed Fish, the head coach at Arizona from Lawrence First and Goal Clinic. In all the activity that goes into the process of getting a job and then getting started, Coach Fish heard about Lawrence First and Goal Clinic. It was a camp that he had worked and wanted to be a part of this particular clinic. So in a time that was very crazy for him with a lot of things going on, he felt that it was important to contribute to this cause and set aside the time to be a part of it. And his topic was marrying the run and the pass in which he showed film from his time with the LA Rams and how they make outside zone and play action look the same to create explosive plays. He shared that on film and I highly recommend checking out the entire clinic. You can see the entire clinic on CoachTube and I'll share the link in the show notes. The segment we took from this is a Q&A that was moderated by John Luce, who's the associate head coach at Army, and Coach Fish. Coach Fish answers a variety of questions from running back footwork and outside zone to the effectiveness of outside zone from gun or pistol, his best advice he's received, how to handle a zero technique, and more. There's plenty of insight packed into this quick cast, so let's kick it over to the Q&A with John Luce and Jed Fish. I saw it today. I'll just tell you guys a, a short, quick story here. I saw on Twitter today that there was this clinic. And in 2015, I went and saw, I went and worked at Lawrence First and Goal. And I couldn't have been more inspired when I was there and inspired to be able to see. I actually had my mom, who's a psychologist in New Jersey. It was my chance to see her. And she drove up to where the camp was. And um, to be able to hear the messaging and to be able to see what Coach Luce doing here and all the great things that I just called up and I said, hey, I don't know if you have a spot, but if you do, uh, I would love to contribute, be a part of this and share our message. So, Coach, I appreciate you having me on and hopefully our guys got something out of it. No doubt, Coach. It's been really good. I got a couple, me- I got a couple questions here. Uh, uh, Mark Pope asked, can the wide zone boot play action combo be as effective from pistol as it is under center? Yeah, it's a great question. We, I believe from pistol is uh, much better than offset gun if you want to do this. Um, I think the pistol absolutely has the ability to be just as effective because the key to the wide zone and the blocking scheme for the play action and the boot is you don't want to take the running back too far off of his track. You want to make sure that that landmark of either a ghost tight end, if you're on the open side or the outside ass cheek of the tight end, if you're actually on the closed side would be one in which that never changes. And when you do it from offset, they'll never get there. So the biggest thing I would say is you can do the boot, the play action and that wide zone by making sure that you uh, do it from pistol. And I think you'll be real successful with it. All right, great. Here's another one from uh, Rob Fucarelli. Hey, Coach, uh, looking at some of your clips you're showing tonight, what are your thoughts on the benefits of condensed formations versus the spread formations? Yeah, when you, when, you, when you look at the condensed formations, we have always felt that it gives you the best chance to have free access for the receivers. Uh, it, we felt that it was a way that you're able to not uh, – Press coverage is really few and far between when you're stacked alignments. Uh, becomes super challenging to defend it. The other thing is it can get it, you can get real good indicators of what they're doing. How are they defending? You're not going to get a ton of defenses to a bunch formation. You're not going to get a ton of defense to a two-by-two two condensed formation. So you'll really be able to dictate to the defense what you're getting rather than uh, being dictated to by being in traditional normals with alignments yeah no question uh luke patera i hope I said that right it uh, is the tackle taught to tip versus the d end or does the depend on the technique it depend on the technique he's in yeah that, that's a long long discussion argument and conversation that goes on in all of these rooms the biggest thing i would tell you is you've got to make a decision in the type of wide zone you want to run. If you want to run an outside zone where you want to do everything you can to capture the edge, then you would never want to teach your tackle to tip them out. You would always want to try to teach them to get to the outside ear hole 
and try to reach them. What we found is it's almost impossible on the open side to reach a five technique. No good five technique will ever get reached if you're on the open side. Mm -hmm. What we started getting to was turning it a little bit more mid zone like where we've actually told our running back still take the angle step that you're going to the wide zone area, right? You still want to open crossover plant and head to that wide zone area. But the biggest issue for us is really once you get your third step, we see that as a cut up opportunity and therefore we're going to encourage our tackle to open up that lane. All right. Excellent. Let's see what else I have here. You guys are asking some good stuff. Uh, is your playbook going to be uh, yourself uh, plus all your former coaches you work with in the offense? Like how are you going to put it all together? Uh, well, you know, the, the playbook has kind of uh, evolved over time. Uh, my first opportunity as an offensive coordinator was in 2009 at the University of Minnesota. And I came directly from Coach Shanahan and the Denver Broncos at that time. So I would say our playbook was almost – identical to the Broncos playbook, which was too much. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, it was my first time ever in college football. I was nine years in the NFL out and we tried to do too much. We tried to put too much stuff in and um, I learned from that. And when I went to Miami uh, two years later, the university of Miami, um, we really condensed up and really tried to do what we, what we thought our guys could do best. Uh, we didn't want to have to run every run that's ever been created, every throw that's ever, every drop back game. And then as the years have evolved in the different places that I've been or coordinated or learned or from, uh, we kind of put together a system, which we, which I firmly believe in is the best system for teaching quarterbacks. But um, we've been able to bring in Brennan Carroll as our run game coordinator, as our offensive coordinator. He was the run game coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks and Jimmy Doherty as our pass game coordinator who just came from Chip Kelly at UCLA. And we're going to begin a pretty deep dive and a conglomeration of what's the best part of the systems we've been in. And let's make sure that we, uh, we don't miss out on that. All right. Excellent. You know, I got a question for you because I always yeah, thought coach. guys coming from the NFL, one, one of the advantages you would have, you know, running a pro style type offense is you could, recruit and tell people that you could obviously prepare them better for the national football league than a normal, just a college spread type, all spread guy. You think that's true? Yeah. You know, you it's certainly, you would think it's an advantage. Sometimes you're having this discussion and it's kind of like going through one ear and out the other when you're right. some of these guys. But I, I mean, I certainly believe that there's an advantage to um, have been in 15 years of draft room. I believe there's an advantage of evaluating college tape for so many years that what you can do is explain to them that I can tell you what they're saying about you, where if you've never been in pro football, those conversations really can't be had or at least can't be said in the same manner. And the messaging that, that I'm trying to give our guys, and we hired guys with, I think we have 100 years of college experience, of pro football experience, is we know what it looks like. We know it's your ultimate goal. There's about a 1.2% chance of you actually getting there, but we can do everything we possibly can to help you get there and at least educate you and inform you on what this, what the NFL looks and feels like. And we have enough ties and contacts to help you get to that next spot. Yeah. I would, I would think that'd be a big advantage, especially, I mean, you've coached the NFL guys a bunch and uh, you know, it's a different animal at army West point, obviously. Yeah. You know, quarterbacks are five foot six. No doubt. Yeah. But. All right, he's got another one here. What what are the back steps Coach and reads? Like, what's he looking at and what are his steps? So, we, we you know, there's three different conversations regarding uh, the type of zone you want to run. If you want to angle step it and make sure you're going to the, uh, the let's call it out the outside or the, the ghost tight end uh, would be the safest uh, drops, would be the safest way to say it, a drop step with your, Right foot if they're going to the left, a drop step with their left foot if they're going to the right, um, a jump step uh, in terms of making sure that they're getting their shoulders to their landmark is a huge part of it for us. We want if their landmark is going to be the outside edge or the outside ass cheek of the tight end, we want to make sure that they get wide uh, with that. And we're going to really overemphasize that angle drop step. The next part of it is we would tell them that if we're running the wide zone, 
Our read is going to be the first down lineman from outside in. If we're running the tight zone, it's going to be the first down lineman from inside out. And then the really good ones are able to see the second level line, the linebacker. So if you're running a wide zone play and you're reading the five technique and the five technique gets tipped out, which we expect that to happen almost every time we're running it to an open side. Now they're really looking at that C gap defender or B gap defender, I should say. And are we able to get up to that linebacker? And if we are, then we're going to continue down the, in the B gap. And as soon as we feel that that linebacker is playing there, we're going to take it back. And really a lot of times that could go all the way behind the center. And that that's why that block between the right guard and right tackle is probably the most critical block. If you're running a wide zone to the left in our system, because that's the alleyway that gets the explosive. All right. Excellent. Here's another good one. I thought, uh, do you have the same philosophy as far as when you're talking about gap scheme runs? We, um, we have not run as many gap scheme runs, but I would say 100%. Uh, we're a bit, we do have in our core to marry with our inside zone game is that is the duo play or however you want to look at that power without the polar, you know, type, uh, type play. Uh, and we believe we need to have on a play action off of that. I don't think the nakeds and boots are nearly as good off of the tight zone or gap play. Uh, but I would say that the play action pass must come uh, off of the gap run and make sure that every gap run you have as a play action pass and every wide zone run you have as a boot and the play action pass. All right. Excellent. Coach, what's the best advice you've ever been given and who gave it to you? Ooh, that's a tough one. I know. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I, uh, the best advice I ever got was from my dad. And my dad told when I graduated high school, uh, in my, in my yearbook, he took out one of those advertisements that, you know, back in the day, the parents used to do or a message to your son. And my, my dad wrote, it is better to try and fail then fail to try and suffer the inestimable loss of what might have been. And um, I've, I've lived by that my entire life. And uh, I'm still here today uh, living by that exact same advice. That's awesome, Coach. That, that's a good one. we got to listen to your dad. He had good advice for you, obviously. When did you know he wanted to be a, uh, a college and an NFL football coach? Uh, Way back early, I was in fourth and fifth grade, and I was ball boying at Bergen Catholic High School um, in Oradell, New Jersey. And yeah. I was um, – my mom had a very close relationship with Bill Rocco, who was the head football coach there, and then went on to Hackensack and Apacong. It was at West Essex prior. And uh, every Saturday, I went to the games. Every day during the week, I'd go to practice. I'd fall asleep underneath the table. Uh, he'd drive me home after practice was over. When I was a little kid, I was probably seven or eight years old then. And uh, that never left me. And um, when the years went on and I got into high school, my dad was a college tennis player. I kind of grew up playing tennis, but I always knew that coaching football is what I wanted to do. So when I made the decision uh, to stop playing tennis and not go to, I was going to go to Tulane and play tennis, I chose to go, uh, to Florida and figure out a way to coach football and it's worked out pretty good for me. So I'm no doubt you made a lot more happy. Money in football I'm pretty happy. I made that decision. Yeah. No doubt. I'll give you one last one. Then we'll let you, we'll cut you loose uh, versus zero technique nose guard coach. What, what is the coaching points for the center? So we would take, we would tell the center to do everything he could to get his hat across on a zero nose. He's having, he's going to have no help. The left guard is going to work with the tackle with a zero nose. So now the center's on an, uh, on an island, so to speak, and his isolation. So we need to make sure that our center gets his hat across as quickly as he possibly can, try to go ear to ear uh, the best he can. And if he can't, he then needs to take the, the nose wherever the nose allows him to take him. So if the nose can't get reached, then you have to keep shoving the nose by, keep working the nose by, and then we'll cut the ball back behind him. Let the running back take care of it. No I question. Gotcha. I said it was the last question I lied because I just saw two more. I thought, I think you'll want to answer them. Sure. What, what's the, uh, how many number of explosive plays are you looking for in a game? Do you have a number? Yeah, we've, we've talked about the number 12 has been a, has been an ideal number. That would be a perfect, that'd be a perfect situation. 
Um, that would be four runs of over 12 yards, eight passes of over 15 yards. That's kind of a, an ideal number for us, what we set as a goal. Uh, we use 12 for runs, to uh, 15 for passes, 16 yeah. for passes, I think, is its easiest way to – the league follows it, so I think 16 and 12. Well, that's outstanding. All right, this will be the last question. I, I think okay. you'll want to answer this. Uh, what's the number one thing you're looking for for a player that you plan to recruit at University of Arizona? Smart and tough. So I guess there's two things. Uh, we want smart and tough. Uh, we know that we obviously have to get skill. We know that we obviously have, there's certain uh, characteristics of every good football player. But to me, the baseline, the number, the, the really the top two are can we get smart football players and we get tough football players. And if we do that, we feel we'll be able to start coaching them to where we want to be and where we want to go. All right. Excellent. Well, like I said in the beginning, Blake Costanzo, he, I mean, he told me great things about you like way back and I'm serious now. And he, and, and Blake's my guy. He's a tough ass. And uh, yeah. he, but he says it like it is, you know, that, and you know, you're yep. around him. So he said great things and said, you were the brains of that organization. I see that. So, <laughs> but anyway, there'll be a lot of people going to watch this. There's, you know, there's about 1200 coaches, I think signed up right now and they'll, you know, a lot of them will watch it on replay and everything else, but it's, uh, right. we really appreciate everything you did for us tonight. It was great coach. Thanks for uh, coming on. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation and uh, I'll do it next year. Thank you again for tuning in to Coaching Coordinator. You can see that entire clinic talk, including the video, as I mentioned, of the outside zone plays, Mary with play action on CoachTube. And I'll put that link in the show notes. Follow all we're doing at coachingcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski.